changed. You stopped being you. You let people stick a finger in your face and tell you you're no good. And when things got hard, you started looking for something to blame. Like a big shadow. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you wanna be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. guessing that you're wondering about my first impressions of Cherry Creek. Well, the first thing, it's beautiful. The smooth granite in the upper Sierras of California. I think it might be hard, hard pressed to find anywhere else like that in the world. But when you look closer and you look into the white water, Man, it's intimidating. I think it might be my toughest challenge yet. I've never paddled anything like it. Steep, long slides, waterfalls, intimidating gorges. 
probably gonna have to do a lot of portages. Plus, I'm also on the other side of 40. It's going to take training, hard work, perseverance, resiliency, and a boatload of courage. Research will be critical. We need the proper flow. Too much water, way too intense. Too low, and we'll be walking rapids, or at the very least, banging our boats down the granite. It has to be perfect, because just to get to Cherry Creek, I'm gonna have to hike my nine foot long kayak on my back up and over a mountain pass 10 miles with enough gear to last three days. This is gonna be intense, and I don't know if I can do it, but to even have a shot, I'm gonna have to start training so that hike doesn't kick my ass. That sucked. Don't come to Bruno Sand Dunes and climb the largest mountain of sand in the US when it's this windy. Holy crap. Yes! Come on, get there!
What an epic winner. Normally, I don't even like winter, but I have found that it goes by much quicker if you get out there and have some fun. As for Cherry Creek, that's not going to happen this year. My brother Scott, my best kayaking partner, he suffered a knee injury. That's a bummer for him. But that might be a blessing in disguise for me, giving me a whole nother year to get in better shape, hone my skills in the boat, and get on some different white water. As for spring in Boise, I always start with the South Fork of the Payette River staircase section. It has an easy roadside shuttle, some really cool moves, and some big rapids. I've been able to get on it anywhere from 1200 CFS all the way up to 6500 CFS as late spring storms will ensure that we're going to have a pretty good water season. Like many other paddlers, my dad taught me how to kayak. And I'm lucky to have Jim and Debbie Dent as my parents. They taught me that I could be anything I wanted to be as long as I was willing to work hard to accomplish those goals. Every Memorial Day weekend, we would head to the Locksaw River. And my dad, he would actually run that in his open red Mad River canoe. But for me as a kid, I hated it. Now, the Locksaw River ran too fast and too cold to play in it. It rained every single time we were there. But as I turned 41 years old, there's no place that I'd rather be. And isn't it kind of funny how that works out like that in life? This year, the saw ran high. Over 18,000 CFS on Saturday, over 14 on Sunday. The private rafters stole the show. So let the battle commence on the wild and scenic Locksaw River.
with a crew of really good paddlers from the White Salmon area. So right to the upper Loxa. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous right now. I'm that howling in the wind I'm that storm that's closing in Boy, I'm coming Ooh. On the rocks and the mountain shake Barrel smoke from the souls they take Yeah, I'm coming And hell's coming with me Like lightning from my soul Heart just like a raven's wing Turns black when it grows cold Taste of sweet revenge It'll cost you more than gold And the wages of our sins Will seal a fate to one below Now I'm the man of God But boy, you gone and cross that line So I'll be that bellows rider And vengeance will be I'm that howling in the wind I'm that storm that's closing in Boy, I'm coming On the roads and the mountain shake Barrel smoke from the souls they take Yeah, I'm coming And hell's coming with me Woo! So beautiful When you're not getting crushed by ocean-sized waves the I grew up in Bozeman, Montana, but as a kid, mainstream sports really captured my attention, especially basketball. We spent so many hours playing hoops, and under the leadership and mentorship of Coach Mike Cole, we won the state championship 
in 1999. And to this day, I still look at that as the greatest accomplishment of my life. We worked so hard, we did it as a team, and we had so much fun all throughout high school. So it's really hard not to look back on those days with anything other than fond memories because it was just awesome. So I'm gonna head home to where I learned how to kayak, get some high water laps on the galley, and also try slalom for the first time. And I give up forever to touch you Cause I know that you feel me somehow You're the closest to heaven that I'll ever be And I don't wanna go home right now Cause all I can taste is this moment And all I can breathe is your life so when sooner or later it's over And I just don't want to miss you tonight The tears that ain't coming Or the moment of truth in your lies So when everything feels like the movies Yeah, you plead just to know you're alive And I don't want the world to see me Cause I don't think the day that we stand When everything's meant to be broken You guys to take this one home, all right?
We love you. Good night. Good job. Man, that is so tiring. That was the Gallatin River Whitewater Festival, and it was really good to see the amount of paddlers in Bozeman now. My goal for the slalom, make every gate, which I was able to accomplish, but as you could see, I was not very efficient. <laughs> I definitely bashed a lot of gates with my paddle, even with my body, so I have a lot to work on. And speaking of working on things. I'm going to see if I can get on some more creek style runs, some technical runs, do some surfing, and try to really get some water that might help me improve and get ready for Upper Cherry Creek.
scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I left Montana for the first time at the age of 29 to join the United States Army. A pretty curious decision, but one that ended up being one of the best of my life. I'm proud to be part of 1st Platoon, Demon Company, 4-6 Infantry Battalion, the regulars, by God, of the 1st Armored Division, we were there. It was a really eye-opening experience of going over to Iraq, not having any clue where we were going or what we were doing. The one constant was we could rely on each other. It was awesome to meet people of different ethnic groups, different cultures, people from all over the country and beyond. And our deployment went pretty well. We came home early, we came home unscathed, but not everybody can say the same. Many veterans who came home from Iraq and Afghanistan suffer from PTSD. They deal with depression and mental illness, and they also came home with debilitating injuries from IED blasts and combat. So any chance that I get, I volunteer with Team River Runner so I can help vets get out on the water and have some fun. For veterans who take on the river, the feeling of making it through a rapid brings a feeling of accomplishment. Nice work. Oh, man. I love it. I, I'm, I'm Aquarius and I'm a water sign and I just took it to it like Took it to it like a fish in water, man. I love the river, dude. I love everything about the river. To the right of the tongue. Yeah. You got these guys, they can, they can fish you out if you flip it in there. Team River Runner started in 2004 and now has more than 60 chapters across the country, and several of those <laughs> join the Boise chapter to run different sections of the Payette River. Very personally challenging. It's intimidating, and all of a sudden, when I mean, you have the awareness that I'm gonna, that I could be getting into some really challenging stuff, but uh, the minute that you, you're on top of it, you gotta go. There's no turning back. You can't get, get this push the stop button. Team River Runner not only provides all of the equipment, but they also teach veterans how to paddle in flat water, how to roll, how to navigate the river, and perform rescue techniques. Come on, Bruce. Hold on to it, brother. <laughs> veterans practice this before they take on something like the Payette River. I fell into this, and I'm so happy to do it. I, I'm, I'm not a veteran myself. But when I found this opportunity, I was so happy to be able to serve those who have served. Many of these veterans also have disabilities, but this nonprofit has opened the doors for vets to get outdoors, do something active, and do it together as a team. That's a big wave up here. I used to just stay home and do nothing because you know I have PTSD and I have all these other disabilities, right? And Team River Runner got me out there. I started, I did Operation Surf. I did stand up paddleboard in the Washington Sea last week. And like anything with water, you count me in. <laughs> I got partnered up with Steven, an Army veteran who is paralyzed from the waist down, and Steven laced the entire Kabartan section. Yeah, go, battle! Straighten her out! Including the very intimidating Howard's Plunge. Okay, what's the best line? Oh, <laughs> right down the middle. <laughs> yes, man, yes. Oh. Hitting massive challenges like this last drop and uh, hitting them successfully, staying on top of the boat and uh, coming out on the other end of Magoo's Wild Ride going, uh, yee-haw! This combination of camaraderie, accomplishing the mission, and doing it together rings familiar for veterans. As Billy Artie McNeil told us, he will raft and kayak the rest of his life. After I get down the river, I get to have a beer. I never had did that before, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty cool, man. I get to meet different people, different nationalities, different, um, just, it's just, it's just, it's just awesome, man. I love it, man. I love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give away nothing in the world. Steve Dent, Idaho News 6. One of the coolest parts about being a kayaker in Idaho, people come here for these rivers. So far this year, I've paddled with a crew from New Zealand, a husband and wife from Norway, and people come from all over the United States. Specifically to this river is, is extra dangerous. Course is clear, safety is in place. When the North Fork Championship rolls around, I get a front row seat to watch and interact with the best kayakers in the world. From Dane Jackson to Annie Ol Sarah Solsis, Noria Newman, I usually get to see Evan Garcia, Andy Bruner, and the Voorhees brothers. In fact, 
Hayden won the crown in 2022. Pass on the crown. That's when Alec Voorhees ran to his brother Hayden and carried the new king of the North Fork, Idaho's own Hayden Voorhees to the stage. What a special moment for this family as parents Mike and Jody watched with pride. <laughs> This is the first time either of us have won this event. We've been, this has been our goals for, for since we started kayaking. Since this event started, we wanted to win this championship and I finally did it. The North Fork flowed at 2,500 CFS during the North Fork Championship, but I always wait till it drops between 16 and 1,800. That's normal summer flows and it basically hovers there all of July and August. It's been a slow progression for me on the North Fork pretty scary river so before I move to the upper sections I want to make sure I ace the lines on the lower five and that includes the booth at crunch To share the inner monologue of what happens when we go kayaking. We've got mind, body, and soul, or as I'm called, heart. But don't get it twisted. I run this show. That's right. We follow the heart through just about every aspect of life. But I couldn't do it without these boys. And first up, we have mind, or as we call him, Poindexter. Yeah, I'm the brains of the operation. If it wasn't for me, we wouldn't have a master's degree. We wouldn't have a job working as a journalist, but still, no matter what we end up doing, I still end up getting overruled most of the time by these two idiots. <laughs> well said. It's pretty accurate. And over here, we've got body, or as we call him, macho. Dude, are you even paying attention? Hey, macho. What are you talking about, brother? We're not even doing anything. We're just sitting here like morons. 
He's pretty simplistic, but we love him and we try to take care of him because he takes care of us. Oh yeah, you know what I'm talking about. There ain't no mountain we can't climb. No peak that we can't ski down. Oh yeah, I'm talking about the white powder, brother. The snow, and when it melts, it turns into water and it heads off to the ocean. But before it can get to the ocean, I'm talking about we have to kayak that water, brother. Oh yeah, I love kayaking. Dig it. We came to the North Fork today to launch the booth at the top of Crunch. How we feeling, boys? Uh, I don't know, guys. I, I, I don't think this is such a good idea. I mean, we, we just got pushed around in Juicer. I, I'm scared, and I, I, it's not too late to change your mind. Oh, come on, Poindexter. Get, get, get on our team, brother. <laughs> well, it's too late to turn back now. Macho, boof it. Guys, we've been in the air a long time. Yeah, we're not clearing this hydraulic. Macho, get ready to brace. Get ready to roll. Oh! Ah! We made it! Ooh, yeah! Guys, there's still one more boo. Oh, yeah. Hey, good looking out, Poindexter. Macho, you know what to do. Want it? Hell yeah, boys! We're home free! Yeah, it's like I've said a million times. I'll say it a million more times. The cream, yes, I said the cream always rises to the top. You're awfully quiet over there, Poindexter. Hey, guys, I know better than to celebrate early. Plus, we have one more booth. Macho, hold it, hold it. What about Neil Poindexter? Like Poindexter said, I've been a TV news reporter for around a decade now, and I've covered some pretty high-profile stories, from the Stephen Avery case highlighted by Making a Murderer to the 2016 presidential election in the battleground state of Wisconsin to all the wildfires out here in the West. Through this job, I've seen the worst of humanity, but I've also experienced the other side of the spectrum. And I got a pretty sweet gig right now as the outdoor reporter, which allows me to tell incredible stories about the people of Idaho. Jacobs, finally. Get it. It's on. It's on. We've shown you the best kayakers in the world take on Jake's. But here's something you rarely see. A hard charging paddle raft team smoking what many consider to be the hardest rapid on the North Fork of the Payette River, designated experts only. It was definitely something that took four years of training to do. We did it last summer. We looked all of each other in the eyes and basically asked if we're ready and we were ready. We put on and I'll never forget that moment. I took a mental snapshot. John Metz grew up in Loman. He's kayaked since the age of 12. John has more than 30 years of whitewater experience and he's the skipper. Right, right. But a raft guide is only as good as the crew he paddles with. John and I met four years ago and we had the goal of rafting the entire North Fork. And so we took a very streamlined approach. Brian Olson and John started on the lower five. But as they moved up the river to more difficult sections, they needed to recruit strong paddlers with a strong mentality to brave the North Fork. You don't see very many four or five person paddle teams out here because it's, it's tough to convince that many people to actually come and do it. Brian and John work in the Treasure Valley as firefighters and they found their paddlers through that brotherhood as Ben Moores, Bjorn Skoblin and Evan Phillips join the team, representing Eagle, Boise, and Nampa Fire. I trust them, they trust me. It's very similar to our jobs. It sounds cliche, but like no one person is more important than the other. Even myself being the guide, I'm relying on them to paddle. Yeah! They're relying on me to steer. These guys would do anything for me and vice versa. The North Fork drops 1,700 vertical feet in a 15 mile stretch of class five whitewater with violent rapids, waves crashing in every direction, and intense hydraulics that seem to go on forever. Commercial rafters won't take customers down this stretch. It's too dangerous. Things don't always go right. I mean, you don't run clean lines every time, and so when, when you do have somebody swim or you do run a bad line and get beat up, um, we deal with that all the time as firemen. Like, that's the reason why we exist is 
people have a problem and they call us. So when we have problems on the river, it seems like we're able to overcome those uh, pretty fluidly because we all kind of share the same mentality. We caught up with this team as they tried to finish off their goal. They had one final rapid to conquer and most consider it the second hardest rapid on the river. It's called Nutcracker. I kayaked Jacob's Ladder in 1994 with a guy named Conrad Forney. Unfortunately, Conrad was killed in Nutcracker in a kayak in 2008. Um, he's got a special place in my heart and he's always someone I looked up to and I look at this rapid a lot differently since that happened. That's why we haven't done this one. I've always wanted to walk it even though we ran some stuff that's technically probably bigger. But today, just knowing these guys, knowing what we're up against and knowing what we've done in the past, we give Nutcracker a shot and we do it for, we do it for Conrad. I was up front, so a lot of what I saw was just white. Um, and you kind of duck your head, paddle stroke, take, look up, try to see where you're at. I'm not gonna lie, you feel a little bit of relief, you know, that everybody, we all made it through this project together and nobody had any serious injuries and that kind of thing. And then, yeah, you just kind of soak it up and enjoy the moment, you, you know, you think about this for years, the day that you finally put it all together and, uh, and here we are, and we'll enjoy it, and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do next. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> and man, I'm proud of these guys. They're like brothers to me. Like, they paddled their butts off, and we were able to get through it, and uh, it's something that I'll never forget, and it's super special to myself and these guys. Steve Dent, Idaho News 6. What a kayaking season it's been, but just like that, the water levels on the Payette River have dropped. But that means one of the rapids that we walk all summer long opens up. Big Falls on the Payette Canyon is still a class five rapid. It's really difficult and I wanna end this year on a win. Because first we have to flash back to three years ago when my sister-in-law Heidi fished me out of the rapid.
Well, I'm not going to lie, that felt really good to get that one. Even if I had to go up to the sawtooth to refocus after I bricked it again, kayaking season's officially over, which means it's now time to do some other sports. I've been playing disc golf for most of my life, but I really didn't get back into it until my family started playing. Not only have I gotten to play with my brothers this year, but my mom and dad also started playing disc golf. I welcome this time of year because the weather's absolutely perfect. But when fall rolls around, my main focus shifts to mountain biking. So now is the time to start hitting the trails. Oh shit. Hi. I ride my bike year round, so that gives me a pretty good indication of my fitness level. And this year compared to last year, it's night and day. I remember doing the Sidewinder to Freestone at the very end of last season, ticked it off right at the beginning. So I think I'm gonna try and improve my mountain biking skills. However, trying to progress in mountain biking, it's one of the scariest things you can do because it's easy to break bones and mountain biking crashes really hurt. But I guess the saying goes, iron sharpens iron.
Well, the snow came early this year, and while that's great for skiing and eventually kayaking, I wasn't quite ready to end my mountain biking season. Had a lot more goals that I wanted to pursue, but luckily for me, every fall, I try to take a trip to the Canyonlands and meet up with my buddy, John Good, for some epic times in the desert. One evening as the sun went down and the jungle fire was burning, down the track came a hobo hiking and he said, boys, I'm not turning. I'm headed for a land that's far away beside the crystal fountains. So come with me, we'll go and see the big rock candy mountains. In the big rock candy mountains, there's a land that's fair and bright. Cause all are empty and the sun shines every day On the birds and the bees and the cigarette trees Where the lemonade springs, where the bluebird sings In the big rock candy mountains In the big rock candy mountains All the cops have wooden legs And the bulldogs all have rubber teeth And the hens lay soft-boiled eggs The farmer's trees are full of fruit And the barns are full of hay well, I'm bound to go where there ain't no snow, where the rain don't fall and the wind don't blow in the Big Rock Candy Mountains. In the Big Rock Candy Mountains, you never change your socks. And little streams of alcohol come a-trickling down the rocks. The brakemen have to tip their hats and the railroad bulls are blind. There's a lake of stew and of whiskey too. You can paddle all around them in a big canoe. In the Big Rock Candy Mountains. In the Big Rock Candy Mountains, all the jails are made of tin. And you can walk right out again as soon as you are in. There ain't no short handled shovels, no axes, saws, or picks. Well, I'm going to stay where you sleep all day, where they hung the jerk that invented work. In the Big Rock Candy Mountains. It was great to catch up with John in Park City, but our schedules didn't align this year, so for the first time ever, I brought my mountain bike to Utah and Arizona. Oh! <laughs> I'm still on my bike somehow. <laughs> oi, oi, oi.
Trail is intense, dude. You'll find yourself. I've never rode anything like it. Follow your heart. And nothing else. And you can do this, oh babe. If you try. All that I want for you, my son, is to be. Some fun it cost me my very last dime. If I wind up broke, oh well, I'll always remember that I had a swing in time. Uh, I'm gonna give it everything I've got. Lady luck, please let the dice stay hot. Let me shoot a seven with every shot. Sign Beaver Las Vegas. Beaver Las Vegas. Beaver. Go 
hard ice cutter steve after a fantastic holiday season we are now in the heart of winter which means it's time to focus on training and preparing for kayak season but it also means the mountains are calling so let's go shred up on the slopes when the day is done Of the Mac, get up what it is, what it does, what it is, what it isn't. Looking for a better way to get up out of bed instead of getting on the internet and Let's checking a new hit. Get up, fresh out, hip strut, walking, a little bit of humble, a little bit of cautious, somewhere between like Rocky and Cosby's for the game. Nope, nope, y'all can't copy up. Glad, moonwalking, and this here is our party. My posse's been on Broadway, and we did it all way. Chrome music, I shed my skin and put my bones into everything I record to it. And yeah, I'm on. Let that stage light go and shine on down. Suit game and plinko in my style. Money, stay on my craft and stick around for those pounds. But I do that to pass the torch and put on for my town. Trust me, on my I N D E P E N D E N T shit hustling. Chasing dreams since I was 14 with the four track busting. Halfway across that city with the back, 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 question. Labels out here, now they can't tell me nothing. We give that to the people, spread it across the country. Labels out here, now they can't. Tell me nothing, we give it to the people, spread it across the country. Can we go back? This is the moment, tonight is the night. We'll fight till it's over, so we put our hands up like the ceiling can hold us. Like the ceiling can hold us. Can we go back? This is the moment, tonight is the night. We'll fight till it's over, so we put our hands up like the ceiling can I'm so damn grateful. I grew up really wanna go fronts, but that's what you get when Wu-Tang raised you. Y'all can't stop me. Go hard like I got an 808 in my heartbeat. And I'm eating at the beat like it gave a little speed to a great white shark on shark. We rock. Time to go off. I'm gone. Deuces goodbye. I got a world to see. And my girl, she want to see Rome. See, so make you a believer now. Nah, I never ever did it for a throne. That validation comes from giving it back to the people now. Nah, sing this song and it goes like, raise those hands. This is our party. We came here to live life like nobody was watching. I got my city right behind me. If I fall, they got me. Learn from that failure, gain humility, and then we keep marching. Can we said. go back? This is the moment. many choices when you come into seven devils you get uh, what we call the devil card and it's got a QR code on it you walk up to the beer wall um, and you select the the draft that you want Boostrol. and then the, the beer starts to flow from Montana where I'm from serve your own beer 
The future is here. This is a good time to mention that I don't ever drink while I'm doing outdoor adventure sports. I learned that lesson the hard way, breaking a collarbone skiing 20 years ago. Thank you, Idaho, for helping me rekindle a love I had for skiing as a kid. You can't beat the affordability. There's zero crowds, and I love how many ski resorts I can travel to from Boise. Today, we're up in McCall. I haven't found much extreme terrain in Idaho, but I heard they have a little spot called Hidden Valley. After all that practice and preparation, working on short, tight turns in steep terrain, I'm back on the road heading to one of the resorts I grew up skiing. So buckle up. This one's going to be intense as we head to Big Sky, Montana, which features some of the most extreme terrain in the country.
Oh my god. I thought it was going to be. That was intense. Well, that pretty much sums up my skiing ability. I handled the double blacks just fine, but got in a little over my head on the triple black despite my preparation, the planning, watching videos, scouting. Sometimes you just don't know what it's gonna be like until you actually get in it. And that's what I would expect will be the case for Upper Cherry Creek, which will not make this film, but it's still on the table. I hope this story shows the importance of creating a goal and then working to try and achieve that goal. Uh, this project's been in the works for over a year, but I had no idea where I would go or what I would do. It all just kind of evolved, and I'm proud of what I was able to accomplish in the boat, on the bike, and on the slopes. The outdoor industry is crazy. There's so many really talented people, people that are way better than me at all of these disciplines, but it doesn't matter. And that's one of the reasons I love it so much. I'm just out there competing with myself, trying to be the best version of myself, doing it in beautiful places in mother nature. So I have no idea what the future might hold, but I do know that it's gonna be epic and it's gonna be a quest for all time. Roll the credits. Like a six string.